What's up trainers? It got a little hot earlier today, so we decided to take a little nightly stroll and play Pokemon Go. We're out here in downtown Downey, so we're gonna walk around, check out the Pokestops, see what kind of Pokemon we find, and we also got a lot of interesting news from San Diego Comic Con, so we're gonna be going over that. Walk with us. Nick, one of the most exciting things that we learned from the panel was that we've actually only seen a small percentage of what this game's about to become. We already know that things like trading and future generations of Pokemon are coming, but this also opens up the possibility for a lot of things that people have been asking for, like battles, in-game chat, or even notifications. Speaking of notifications, there was an app released today called Poke Notify, and it sends you notifications of the Pokemon that are nearby without having to have the Pokemon Go app open. And the way that it works is you go in and you select which Pokemon you want to receive notifications about. This is cool because this is something that we kind of expected would be a feature of the game to begin with, but I have a few issues with the way it works. First of all, it doesn't let you set a maximum distance for notifications, so it's telling me about Pokemon that are a thousand meters away. I'm not going to go track those down. The way that I want to use it is I want it to notify me of Pokemon within 50 meters or spawning distance, so I can know that if I open my app at that exact moment, a Pokemon will appear. The other issue I have is that it's like Pokevision in that when you click on a notification, it tells you exactly where that Pokemon is. Again, this feels like cheating to me, and I'm not going to use it that way. John Hankey mentioned that Niantic is aware of server issues and they honestly just weren't prepared for the amount of people that were going to play this game. They really just underestimated the immensity of the Pokemon world. He also talked about the three footprint glitch that's within the game. He understands that it's an issue and it is being fixed. Okay, Whoa. Uh, pause. A pincer and a Marowak just appeared. Oh, the pincer disappeared for me. And it didn't for me. Oh, It psych. did. We're it too did. slow. It did for me. I can't even hit the Marowak. Marowak. I got the Marowak. I got it. Okay. And it's a red circle with the uh, through that ball super quick. 682. What was yours? I didn't even see. We're about to find out. In a Pokeball. Oh. I'm gonna try a Pokeball too. Maybe I'm you too don't cocky. Got it. Maybe you I'm too got cocky. It. Let's see. I missed my word He's about to miss his Marowak. 955. Nope. Can't get it. 955, 9.55 on yours? Yeah. 955 and you caught it in a Pokeball. <laughs> Mine's See, 682 and I'm going for of... the Ultra. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. I just want to know, as far as like your opening theme, who made that? Is that like Cubby. Always... It's a guy named Cubby. Cubby? Yeah, there's a link in the description. We both just caught that Marowak, but you'll see that they have different CP values. One thing we know is that both of these Pokemon will have the exact same IVs. When two people catch a Pokemon that spawns in the same place, it has the same set values for IVs, height and weight, the moves are the same. The CP is different because the Pokemon's level is different, and that's randomly generated based on your trainer level. Each team is associated with the legendary bird. If you guys don't remember, Nick is Team Instinct, I'm Team Mystic. And what we found out is that each team might only be able to capture its own legendary bird. Another thing we learned is that teams are going to become more important in the game, which is good because right now I feel like all they're doing is make people fight over colors. Yeah. Legendaries and Ditto are the only Pokemon that haven't been caught yet. John Hankey let us know that they're coming, we just don't know when or where. Nantic, I think, is waiting on the global release of the game before talking any more about it. When it comes to Ditto, there's a lot of interesting theories about how you might find it. One of our favorites is that it might be disguised as one of your Pokemon, and that you can find it by tapping on the Pokemon, and you'll hear Ditto's cry instead. In one of our earliest episodes, we predicted that certain well-known spots would be Pokemon centers. Now, John Hankey had let us know that certain Pokestops might be able to be turned into Pokemon centers. This goes back to something you said earlier about Pokestops becoming more customizable. We already have lore modules that we can add to a Pokestop, but there might be different upgrades that we can add in the future, including a Pokemon Center module. So we've done a lot of walking and we decided to put a little pit stop here because there's two lore, I mean, I'm sorry, there's two Pokestops and one lore activated. And I've already got four Pokemon up here on my screen. This is crazy. One of my friends works in the office right behind us. What's up, Blake? 
and he just farms these Pokestops all day. He says there's lures going on all the time because Portos is like the crazy busiest place in Downey. I got a 10 CP to do it. <laughs> Don't let the weak guys get away. It's free experience points that your character can be getting. You can always transfer them out. No Pokemon is worthless. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That's also true. Sandshrew, double Sandshrew. Oh, Tauros, I'm coming for you. Two Sandshrews, one lure. Uh, two Sandshrews, damn. I already got a Sand Slash though. I don't, I still don't have a Sand Slash. I had enough to evolve one. Which I one? have enough right now, and I'm gonna evolve my Sandshrew, my first one that first I caught. One. So we've been sitting here like three minutes. And we just caught, what, eight Pokemon, maybe? Honestly, around there. It's crazy. I would guess that this exact location has the most cellular activity during the day in all of Downey. Because there's always a line out the door whenever this place is open. And for all you guys who continue to ask what that blue circle behind your Pokemon is, it's your recently caught Pokemon. So we just caught a whole bunch, and we'll be able to know which ones are the most recent by that blue background. That's it, that's all it means. Thanks for joining us on our little night stroll. I hope you guys are as excited as we are for some of that Comic-Con news. And just as always, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. We work really hard to make sure we answer everybody. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Now let's talk about using the Pokedex to find a Pokemon you're looking for. First, you're gonna choose the species. I'm looking for Onyx today. Beyond just a map, the app gives you a ton of useful information, including typing, base stats, possible movesets, and even the different CP levels that trainers have encountered the Pokemon at in the wild. When you expand the map, you can zoom in or out to find more specific locations for the Pokemon. 